603. Um, seems like I don't have any more people coming in. I'll try and keep an eye on that if more people want to join. But let's go ahead and start this meeting first by um, reading that as the chair of the Rochester Select Board. I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically and in accordance with act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are a providing public access to the meeting by telephone, video, or other electronic means using the Zoom platform. And all members of the board have the authority to communicate to contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired, participate in the meeting. And by um, you can contact the town clerk to request the invitation or see the invitation that is on with much more people. Um, on the post agenda. So we we previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing this meeting, including how to access the meeting using telephone, video, or other electronic means in our posted meetings agendas. And that's basically um, it. Thank you all for, for joining us. And there's nobody in the waiting room. So we'll start with the any additions to the agenda as it's typed up and posted? Going once, going twice. I guess we have enough agenda to deal with. So we've got that, none of those. Um, and we've confirmed that. Um, we we'll go to the prior meeting minutes of June 22nd meeting. And I went through those and they look good to me. There's, um, Pat, Frank, you have any input on that? I read them too. They look fine to me. They look fine to me also. So I'd move we accept those as presented. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Yeah. We got someone else wants to get in. I thought I could let her in. Okay. So we got um we had um on here. I don't see Ethan Bowen on here yet, so I don't so and I guess Nancy is not going to make it here to this meeting, so we can move on and maybe come back if they join the crowd uh, he's, afterwards. He's going to be late. He was waiting for Courtney to get home to watch the little one. Okay. All right. So, um, Joan, have you got any updates for us? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, I want to let you know uh, Joan. RCS. Um, the uh, emergency project that the town's been working on. Um, I think I have a good possibility for uh, some financial assistance to the landowner we've been working with. It's called the Disaster Recovery Relief Fund. And it got started sometime uh, in, uh, around the time of uh, Tropical Storm Irene. Um, and I've talked to someone who serves on your board or some kind of committee. And he said that he's put it on a list for review that'll take place sometime in the next month or maybe a month and a half. So I'll have some more information about that uh, for you and for the landowner uh, when that happens. Um, so is this the, um, you're talking about the, the Mendel property or up yeah. on, yeah. Yeah, okay. yes. And I, I did meet with Dean last week and went over that with him. Um, I haven't talked to him in the last couple of days since I got this new information, but uh, he knows I've been working on it. Um, Town Garage uh, project, the stormwater project, I have some new information on that. Uh, WRP has been able to get a new grant. And uh, the nice thing about it, the especially nice thing about it for us is it doesn't require any funding from the town. Remember originally the last grant we had um, uh, or that WRP was able to get but then lost um, 
uh, required the town to put in 20% of the, the cost, but now uh, we're getting close to a $90,000 project, improvement project there, uh, with no funding required from us. And um, we're, I, I was in touch with Cooter today uh, on the logistics. Um, WRP is going to handle the bidding and actually uh, do the contracting directly. Um, and uh, well, with Cooter, the, the main issue has just been timing so that we don't interfere with um, his bringing in sand for the winter. Um, and so we agreed on a, a tentative start date of August 10th. That's a Monday. The project is expected to take about a week. Um, if there are any delays, it'll probably be to, well, you know, unexpected conditions, but also if there's rain delays, uh, Cooter has said that he can be somewhat flexible in terms of um, going over more than a week. And the bidding will be done, as I said, by WRP. Um, they will, it's not gonna be a, a bidding where, you know, they invite everyone. They're gonna contact contractors and invite them uh, to bid. And all of the uh, contractors that we know about in Rochester who do this sort of work will be on that contact list. Um, uh, so that's going to move ahead, hopefully. And uh, do you have any questions on on that at this point? No. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead, Pat. This is for the stormwater runoffs part of the project. Right. Uh, right. Where do we stand with the uh, town sewer connection project, which is that's that's been completed, and they also have the plans. When they did the sewer connection, they had the plans for the waste the stormwater so that they knew, you know, uh, to make sure there wasn't any conflicts between where they were digging and where they were connecting and that kind of, or when they do the stormwater, they have the plans for what. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that went pretty smooth. And at the same time, they've also um, initiated uh, and finished the concrete on the, the sandbox down there, the, the sand um, filtering. Um, unit which was falling apart last winter. Mm -hmm. Is there any word on the Cushman project, Joan? Yeah. yeah. You, uh, when are, when you do we meet with uh, Mrs. Bond there? Um, well, uh, the arrangement that I made with WRP is first that, that we would see if we could come up, we meet on the ground and see if we could come up with a low cost reasonable solution to uh, Mrs. Bond's uh, concerns, which would then make her feel free to agree to uh, allow us to work on her property and she would sign some permanent and temporary easements. And so um, first I wanted to just make sure the select board knew what that was, Frank, and then have you vote and decide that is something it's okay for us to move ahead with. And the next step would be for uh, for us to talk to another family member um, that WRP has some contacts with um, and see if he can sort of get involved with the conversation to sort of help help move things along. And so um, what we talked about was not much of a uh, of a big change. The, there is a, a little bit up the road from Mrs. Bond's driveway, there's a culvert that is already scheduled for replacement and upsizing um, under the FEMA 2019 funding. And that, that culvert already um, discharges into a wooded area. And eventually the though does flow onto sort of a mowed area that's part of the, uh, the area around Mrs. Bond's house, and that's what her concern has been. So uh, we agreed that a possible solution could be a fairly simple one is to continue letting the water go through that roof because that's really the best way for water to flow off is into a wooded area. It does slope down somewhat towards the lawn. And when it gets to the lawn, what we would propose to do is to build a simple swale and sort of a holding area that would slow the water down, help spread it out, where it's still far away from the structures 
and um, let it sink into the ground more that it doesn't cause um, you know, uh, flooding uh, in the area around her garage or into what used to be a garden area, which is her, you know, her main complaint. And I, I don't remember if we came up with an estimated cost, but it was something the town could easily do uh, in a day with an excavator is what I remember. Um, yeah, I, I think we kind of judged it at around 1,000 to 2,000. Right, okay. I think we just kind of looked at it like that. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad of a thing. It's an easy fix if, if she'll allow it. Um, it'll just keep the water diverted away from her garage and in the garden. So hopefully, because we got to use both sides of that, of her land down there on the culvert job, we're going to need to uh, appease her and hopefully this will do it. Yeah. So the question is to all three of you, if, if this is something you find is reasonable and approvable, if you, if you could just sort of indicate that so then we can move ahead. Didn't, I didn't want to do this, um, Frank, you know, Frank agrees that we didn't really want to do it until you were able to hear the details and decide if it's something you wanted to move ahead with. No, I think absolutely that's, uh, what do you think, Pat? That's, that's we're doing a lot of work on our property. I think that's the least we could do to, um, you know, keep things moving smoothly, keep the water going the right direction. Yes, I, I agree. I think um, her son, Bill, should be also brought in, like Joe was saying, to, to uh, help her or reassure her and help her along. Okay. Great. Thanks for digging into that, Joan. Okay. That's all I, I need to update you on right now. All right, that's that's a good a good slot. Thank you. Um, I think that I saw Ethan join the crowd. You there? Yes, I am. Yeah, um, we had you in there as a guest. Would you like to um, um, jump in and let us know what you'd like to speak about here? Oh, okay. I saw I was way down on the agenda, so I didn't know if you want me to wait till then or not. But. Uh... Uh, um, we could um, pick off some of the, the um, well, not that the school building is an easy conversation, but we could um, pick on some of these easier ones before we get to the elephant in the room. Uh, yeah, it's whatever you, whatever you will. I'm, I'm cooking, I, I told Pat that I'm cooking dinner for my son and waiting for Courtney to get home at 645. Um, so uh, to give my full attention, I'd be great if it was a little later. All right, that, okay, we can hold that off to later. Great, no thank you, appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, later. Um, and Nancy Woolley was gonna talk about the park house generator. Does anyone, I mean, there's, a, a, we basically need a, a letter of support from the select board that um, for a, uh, a grant proposal that Walt Wells is preparing. And so Dude, I, I- Sorry, Dude, did you see my email earlier today? Uh, <laughs> I can tell you what it said, if that's easier. <laughs> I just let you know that um, I talked to Walt this morning and um, he sent me some information so that I could draft a, a, a simple letter. It he just needs town support for the application that he's gonna be submitting in a couple of weeks. And so I'll have that uh, and send it over. If I'm not in the, off in, in the office uh, this week, I'll send it over to Julie uh, so that you can sign it and send it along to Walt. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Yep. So, um, excuse me, I just want to make sure she's going to, a gentleman's going to write a letter and, um, and, but you basically are all in favor of this. You'll just sign it when it comes. Is that basically the feeling? Yeah. Yeah. It's just in support of the grant, I, I yeah, believe. Is right. that right, Pat? Yes, that's what it okay, is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just, just to make town support. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I understood that correctly. Excuse me. I think we kind of lost Doom there somewhere. <laughs> Does seem <laughs> it does appear that way, doesn't it? He's our host. <laughs> well, 
I don't see his name up there anymore. What happened? Hey. June? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, do you want us to wait for you or? I, I can. I can carry until you dial in, but you're going to need to be there when we get to the road park. Yes, we are, we, we're doing that right now. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, folks, I just spoke to June and his computer decided to do an update, so it kicked him out. As soon as he's able to add that update back in, he will come back in. Uh, in the meantime, can everybody hear me? You're going in and out and kind of wobbly. Okay. Um, June's computer decided- Can you hear me? <laughs> Dune's computer decided to update, so it kicked him out of the program. So as soon as his update is done, he will be back in. Okay, you keep going in and out. <laughs> Your voice. Dune will be back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so in the meantime, um, we, we want to go on record and Dune agreed that we want support the grant for the park house generator that's that's right and i agree to that as well yep. so um, the next thing that maybe we should have a little discussion about um how about we have a report from frank about how the voting went um, not the results of the vote, but the process of the voting and what your thoughts are going forward. Um, that's not on here, but okay. No, but it's not, not a decision item. It's just no, no, like, that's all right. That's all right. I, so Frank is going to report. Okay, thank you. That, that's really uh, um, everything went well in the setup. I didn't stay there for the day. I think Julie seemed very happy with it. I think she could answer more to how it worked out than anything that she'd want to chime in that would be great yeah the voting day went really well um i can i can see that the august primary will um with some uh modifications will do fine so between that and then the election in uh in november all should go pretty well of course there are a lot of absentee ballots out so that may uh you know, make the uh, the vote will we probably won't have a lot of people attending the vote since a lot of absentees are coming in. So, are you able to uh, keep up with all that by yourself, Julie? Or uh, currently, I am. Uh, as the workload picks up, I may have may may have uh, may need some help with that. Well, don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Yeah, and Julie, if you need volunteers um, on election day, you know, um, let me know. I, may, I could. I'm working at home now, and I maybe could help. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Also, so that we come forward from the last meeting. Um, Frank, can you elaborate a little bit about what the project entails down at the Mendel property? Um, what it is that the, they plan on, on doing to the stream there to make, make life a little better for Dean? It's, it's basically going to, they're gonna take out a lot of the, the sediment that's moved in there that's kind of blocked the, the channel a little bit and open it up some. And they're going to put a couple of bigger stones up above. They're not. They're not really uh, putting a putting in riprap or anything. It's just a couple of stones up above that they're going to put in, 
It's basically hollowing all the material out so that the channel goes straight towards the pipe and, and has a little meandering path to it, but it really is just so plugged up that they just need to get it out. So it's kind of split in two streams at this point, one of them not going directly towards the path where it's the culvert that under Route 100. So that's what the gist of the project is. It's pretty much, um, what is it? Uh, the Natural Resources Project. And we're basically doing the funding. They have to do the funding through the, uh, through the Avenue of Government, which is the town. And then that'll give Dean a 25% pay on his side and 75% uh, coming from NRCS. So it's, it's really a, we're just acting as a, a zone, a buffer zone for Dean so he can get some funding to help him out down there. Good, thank you. Yep. I'm back. Soon is back. Windows yeah. update just in time. <laughs> Man. Okay. So uh, we are probably ready to move on. We had a, a brief discussion, June, about um, the Dean Mendel project. And we had a brief discussion about how we felt about how the vote had, had gone uh, on June 30th. And, and we'll the voting process. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're ready to move forward on, back onto our agenda of um, what's next on the list. The, um... And we they talk about a letter for of support for park house generator. Yeah. That's yep. Yep. And um, Julie, you're gonna um, compose something that we can sign. Joan's gonna put it together. Yeah, I do. Joan will. Okay, great. So we have next on the agenda the approval of a class four highway improvement application, and this is on the for Pine Gap Road, submitted by uh, Marty and Christian. And there, um, I'm sure a lot of people here are. Um, Excuse me, uh, do not. Um, I'm just interrupting because it looks like the meeting is no longer recording. Is that true? Um, I think when you came back in. in. I would think that um, Orca Media, are they still in there? Yeah, they're still in there. I, yeah. I also am recording as well. Okay. So okay, the recording thing went away, just to let you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, let me see if I have. <laughs> it's asking me to re request permission from the reading host. I think since it bumped me out, I had to join the meeting as a participant instead of the host. So I think we're going to have to. Uh, now it's, it oh, says wait, recording no. now with no, a little red dot on my screen. All right, cool. Thank you. So, uh, I'm recording it now. All right. <laughs> so, um, for a little history, I presume most everyone knows what we're talking about. For but for um, those that will see this in on the recording and maybe don't know about this, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the origins of Pine Gap Road, which is in the Bingo Brook Basin, and it dates back to well before this road was the town of Rochester's responsibility. Uh, most of the West Rochester area was originally part of the town of Philadelphia, and in 1814, the northern port portion of the town of Philadelphia was annexed to the town of Goshen, and in 1847, 11,300 acres of Goshen land was transferred to Rochester. And in these days, people lived all over these hills. And besides access to homesteads, Pine Gap Road gave access to at least two schools and a remote corner in the town of Hancock. And some people stayed and some people used that road to get down off that mountain and get the heck out of Vermont. People left to take part in the Civil War or to find work in larger factory towns. And as motor vehicles became more prevalent, Pine Gap Road was used less. In 1932, the Green Mountain National Forest was established and began to acquire land, a lot of land in West Rochester, leaving a few scattered private inholdings. 
1970, the Forest Service began work on Forest Road 62, or Thresher Hill Road, which loops through the same mountainside that Pine Gap Road accesses, and giving new access to the uppermost private parcel of land on Pine Gap Road, except in winter when Forest Road 62 is closed to motor vehicle traffic. In the 1980s, the owner of that upper parcel on Pine Gap Road used Pine Gap Road to bring building materials and build a camp. Also in the 80s, Mason Wade bought the parcel of land and a camp on the lower end of Pine Gap Road, the second of two camps located across a bridge over Bingo Brook. Time passed, rivers flowed, and in the early 2000s, that bridge was washed out, resulting in a new $200,000 bridge giving access to the camps on Pine Gap Road. In 2017, the new owners of the upper camp requested a permit from the Forest Service to use Forest Road 62 in the winter to access their camp and were denied. Their other option to access their property was to use the largely dormant Pine Gap Road, which creates the eastern boundary of Mason Wade's land, resulting in a petition in September of 2017 to discontinue the section of Pine Gap Road that passes Mason's land. Can sit over here, dear? Yeah. Um, You're in, out. Info, um, what, okay, by a yeah, chair. So that, that petition Option discontinued yeah. was also fought by a petition to discontinue all of Pine Gap Road above Mason's property. Both petitions were denied and in January of 2018, Mason sued the town of Rochester claiming that Pine Gap Road does not exist. Jump to December 2018 when Pat Harvey and I joined in a mediation process attempting to settle the matter after which Mason refused to settle. His lawsuit was settled in favor of the town and he sued again in August of 2019 claiming that Pine Gap Road is not where the town and state maps say it is. This suit was also decided in favor of the town and here we are with a formal application from Marty, Mayor, and Kristen Casella asking permission to clear down trees, repair existing water bars, and make Pine Gap Road passable enough that they can access their property. Last week I walked the property with, um, or the road with Cooter, the town road foreman, and Chris Matrick from the National Forest and Marty to view his proposal and that's where we are. So um, any comments? I assume Pat and Frank, you've had a chance to review the application? Yes, I have had a chance to view it. And I did a little research backwards um, and a very similar situation happened in the year uh, right around 2001 with a road called, currently called Cooper Run up off of Bethlehem Mountain Road. Um, that road had been diminished to nothing more than a, a trail. Um, and the town had decided when a homeowner wanted to develop his land down, further down that road that um, they were not interested in um, upgrading the road. So the landowner themselves um, paid for the upgrade of the road. And to this day, it is still considered a class four town road, but um, the town still turns around prior to the section that was upgraded and that uh, landowner uh, maintains that road himself um, out of his own pocket, yet it is still a core road. Um, that is a, a very similar, very similar situation to what is happening now. So I consider that setting a precedence for um, how we should be looking at this particular situation. Um, the other situation that I found uh, does go back to 1908, um, whereas the uh, Beans Bridge Road, um, as a road at the um, Martin Farm, the Carl Martin Farm, um, and there was some de development in two houses built a little further up that road by Simpson Development SNL Properties, and um, they improved the road. Um, at their own expense in order for the town to uh, go further. In this particular case, they upgraded the road to town specifications. Therefore, the town does actually go 
up that road um, beyond those two houses um, because now it serves uh, access to one of our sewer sites. So um, that is yet another precedence that was set. So I see this as a uh, a cost um, on how town uh, looks. And Carol's trying to get in. I think he hasn't turned his mics on. Um, that's it for me. Pat, Frank, this is you, Lizzie. Um, you were okay. not involved in in the history on this so much is because you're new on the board. So that's why I put together kind of a just a quick timeline of what has transpired through all this. Um, I would, um, I'm sure there's more comments. This is Lizzie Shackelford. I just had a couple questions. Yep. Can y'all hear me? Yep. I was just wondering what the what the total length is of the road. I, I read through the um, the proposal and it seems like it goes quite a long ways. And I was wondering if we'd done just because that area is such a, I mean, it's it's pretty wild now. I know it used to be a, um, a well lived in part of uh, Rochester's community, but um, has there been any kind of assessment of you know, environmental impact and, you know, potential water damage and erosion. I mean, I've, I've used that trail up there, you know, to the extent that there's a trail and it's pretty steep. So I'm just wondering if there's any, been any kind of consideration or assessment of that. Yeah, that was a, a big part of what we, um, walking that with the forest service in terms of, um, you know, looking at, at where the water is going because they're concerned because for a large extent of it, the water would be turned or originally was turned off that road into the Forest Service land. And so they're, they had definitely have an interest in how that is controlled. The upper half of the road, in terms of how long it is, I think it's about, it's about two miles, like 1.9 miles. The um, upper half of that road above Thresher Hill Road is actually slated to be used as a, the skid road from the Forest Service for the um, Robinson timber cut. So that is, um, you know, of course, you know, the Forest Service, they're, they're not going to be cutting trees when owls are nesting and, and such, but that's, there's definitely going to be impact up there. And it's um, really the, what they're proposing here is to actually take some of the, the requirements that the town has under the new watershed requirements from the state and, and address some issues that are, that are um, you know, we're technically liable for. So it's um, in, environmentally, it's, it's a change, but it's not, it's, um, it's not going to be, you know, degrading the, the, um, the terrain, I feel, you know, it's actually going to be taking some situations that are kind of out of control and, 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 um, you know, putting some control in there. They're not talking about um, flattening and graveling that road. We're basically talking about clearing some dead trees and some small trees and, and reestablishing existing water bars that were originally meant to, to control the water on the road, as far as my understanding of the application. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Will there be any culvert work done that's going to direct the runoff into Bingo Brook? There's, they're not talking about any culverts. There may be need of a culvert at where the top half of the road meets Thresher Hill Road because it's, um, and that's, that's all the water there is eventually going to go into Bingo Brook because it's in the Bingo Basin. And yeah. then possibly one culvert at the very bottom where Pine Gap Road interfaces with Mason's driveway, but the rest would just be water bars. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, this is Emma Wade. Are you okay to speak? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi, select board and whoever's here. Um, so I'm here tonight as a landowner affected by this permit application um, and I'd like it to be said on record that I was not notified, notified, my family was not, that a permit was submitted or in the work, um, even though it crosses our property um, and will affect our access and our actual property. Um, and I'm only here tonight because I saw on the, I'm, I've gotten accustomed to look at the agendas and saw approval of class four highway improvement application. And I thought, huh, what's that? No, like it couldn't be, 
in bingo, we, we, you know, that just, we, why wouldn't we be notified? And it was a Friday, right? The agenda was sent out. So I just want people to hear this, that it was only that I emailed Julie this morning and received a copy of the permit, which says that it does affect our property. I'm, I'm concerned that this is not addressed also in the town ordinance, which is part of this history as well that um, a year ago, I believe in consequence of the lawsuit and this issue, um, the town created a first ever policy for class four road, um, for class four roads and particularly for an improvement permit policy. Um, so this is a new thing for the town and in the ordinance, I notice that it doesn't say anything about notifying um, the public and of the process and of the landowners affected. Um, you know, I may not understand this fully, but it, I want to bring up that it, it doesn't appear to be there. And the experience of this meeting here is that um, we were not notified. Um, I also was thinking about the other landowners and one being the National Forest and called Chris Matra this afternoon and he notified me that he walked with you Dune and um, Kristen and Martin um, and walked along the road and I was also surprised to hear this and um, frustrated as a property owner that's going to be affected and after all that has happened um, you know I, I would hope that there would still be goodwill to uh, to have consideration for the parties. A lot of energy has been invested in concern and stress and worry and care to the property and to the surrounding area. Also in this history, thank you Dune for sharing. It was not shared that a lot of public it, people in the town of Rochester have expressed concern and interest in this area over the past couple of years because it is you know, it's not only affecting my family's private property and the McCurriers below, but it's public land. It is everybody's national forest there and a place for recreations. I just want to say that on record. Um, and in terms of the, this meeting with the Forest Service walking along, this does tell me that it sounds like the, the town has been involved already in this permit application. Um, and I want the public to know that. What does this mean when we look at this? I don't even know if everyone here in the meeting has seen the application because that's not included with an agenda. Um, I only ha saw it because I asked for it this morning by email. Um, so I'm concerned about, you know, how can the public can ha have even um, feedback for the select board if they don't know what what this is. Um, particularly to our property, this takes out trees and what has been our lawn for 30 years, our perennials, we have lilac bushes and, you know, how will this be considered? Um, how will runoff to our land be considered? How, I, I have more questions. Um, how will the materials and equipment be dealt with. We have not been communicated with at all, and the McCurriers have not either. Um, so how, how does this relate to this permit application? So how that relates to the permit application, I guess, well, now here we are with a, a, a final, finally a proposal about what would happen after several years of back and forth about it and I would um I really don't think that Marty and Christian are intending to to make a bigger footprint than is necessary and I would I mean, do you want to speak to this Marty and Christian about your your um, willingness to work with the property owners to to work towards the uh, um um well working towards an acceptable situation is kind of hard to um hard to to entertain in light of the the 
the um, the lawsuits, I guess, and the and the um, resistance that's been put up to it. But I didn't. Marty and Kristen, do you want to say something about your in, intent and how you're going to approach the 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 modification of the road? Sure. Um, I, I would say. To, to Dune's point, the footprint is likely going to change very little. Um, it, it is going to go across the edge of the property where your guy's property meets the Forest Service. Um, I, I would say looking historically, I think that was, that fact has been well known now for a couple of years. Um, we've, we've been a couple of months since summary judgment and we've been a couple of years in a couple of years and thousands of dollars in in trying to help defend this thing um and so i, I would say sure we're we're open to discussion um what what i what i wouldn't say that we're open to is is going into another couple of years of of debate on the road being a road and and our intention here is really just to make it passable in a four wheel drive vehicle. So, you know, if you were to walk up through there, the majority of the road, so it, it's about a mile of road in, in um, Rochester and about four tenths of a mile in Hancock. And the majority of the road that's in Rochester by simply removing um, trees that are down, um, and, and a handful of trees that are standing and may, maybe a little bit of work just above the Wade property on, on the Forest Service land, you'd be in a situation where it'd be passable on a four wheel drive. So we're, the, the intention here isn't to make this thing look like Bingo Road, um, but the intention is to make it passable. Um, can I follow up, have a follow up question about the passability? Sure. Um, so my understanding from talking with Chris and what has been said so far is that there is not intention to build culverts, but uh, Kristen Martin, do you intend to drive over the very substantial water bars? Yes. Okay, and if so, what does that mean if this is a public road? If and it's public access and anybody can go up there. So technically, is that true? Or is it something that's locked off? I don't know if the town can do that. And it seems like a liability that people could go up there and get stuck, one, or hurt. Yeah, I, so I would say yes. Any So, so yes, we would drive over them. When we, when we talked with Chris, um, there's there's a number of places where there's water bars where you could do a culvert. Our our preference would not to be putting culverts in, um, simply because the fact of when when you have a road that's not being used a lot and you're not keeping up with cleaning them out, it's an easy way to have a whole bunch of runoff ending up in the road because a couple of branches and some leaves plugged up one end of the culvert. So. It's not really the most practical fix for the for the runoff that's already crossing the road. Um, so we would just intend on driving over the water bars, and and yes, with any class four road, anyone could drive out there. They they could get stuck. Um, I guess I can't really comment too much on what somebody else might do on it. Thank you. Uh, select. Board, could you comment on this concern? Well, I, probably some signage um, discouraging people from driving up. But no, we can't. Um, can't. It's not going to be a private road. It is. This is a town road, so you know people will have the right. But I would. Um, I would assume that the the minimal extent to which they plan on upgrading it is or maintaining it. Would, would discourage the casual um, car to just poke its nose up there. Um, you know, it's a uh, driving through water bar is the first one you come to. You say, no, I don't want to do this, you know, in a car. 
it's there's there's no question that there will be you know curious people and there will be you know more traffic than there is now on it and it's um that's the nature of the, the of the beast you know well as it is you know we get curious people and they yep. they stop because there's there's no road that continues um so really i mean those are serious water bars what if if that's a public way what does that mean if you i mean you can turn around but you can't turn around if you're it's a steep hill and it's not easy to what's getting at is there a question there like I said, it'll probably um, have some signage, um, you know, signage, making that making that point to um, to um, the unwary. <laughs> okay, so that the town would be liable for following through on that. That would not be part of the road improvements. I would have to discuss that with with you know the the road foreman see what's appro appropriate and see what's legal on um, roads i think just uh, the polite one <coughs> but i'm not going to commit to um, specific specific actions right now but it but you raise a good point and i think that would be um you know we'd check it out that would be an appropriate um you know warning sign to put up Okay. Um, I also spoke with Chris Matrick and he was saying that the, so the northeast corner for every, for, of our property is sort of a, a really wet section North. in this um, way. And it's also our, our main spring that goes into our property and wondering how that will be, um, protected in these improvements and or if there can be you know some measures to take care of our water source when we walk that i believe we we pointed that out as an area where it would be appropriate to bring in some clean um clean gravel to make that you know a less of a muddy muddyable spot is that um was that your understanding, Marty? Yeah, I I think we'll we'll do what's necessary to to make sure that there's not a bunch of silt rolling off the road right there. Um, I I would say just to be clear on it is as we went through mediation, what over a year ago, what what was on the table is for us to do some work with that spring and. And that was denied on on Mason's side. So we're we will do our best on the road and, and make sure that the drainage is better than it is today. Um, but Emma, if your question is, are we entertaining and doing something else down where the water collection is? I think the answer would be no at this point. Thank you. Um, just for clarity, I mean, in terms of talking about the mediation. Um, Thank you for bringing it up. I think that we're all, we're not supposed to talk about what happens in mediation legally, um, but um, I <clears throat> from our from our point of view, it was we were not denying it because of that conversation about water. Um, <sighs> Question: um, You seem to have a concern, Emma, about your water. Um, can you point out where your septic system is? Because that could potentially be a larger concern. So if you could um, establish what you have for your septic system, um, that would support uh, the distance from where the spring is for the incoming water. And um, you should, you should uh, provide a property map showing where all of your utilities are so that all of it can be um, avoided. Thank you for that question, Pat. I don't think that's an appropriate question to ask. Okay. Um, uh, lastly, can I ask, because I didn't get a response on why the McCurriers and, our, and my family were not notified of any of, of this development? 
I believe that this, I this assume in the this is not in the hands of the zoning board. Um, correct, Dune. This is in the hands of the road commissioner. It's the select board. And, well, the select and, and it's the select board that makes that decision, right? Now, this is not don't, don't change where or a subdivision where all the neighbors must be notified. This is improving an existing uh, road. So I'm not sure. I think you're thinking that it's as if it's falling under the, the zoning board rules and, and it does not correct them. It's yes, and it's a select board decision, but I did. Um, I know that um, specifically um, Brad and Harlan had requested and I and I, I suppose you had requested being notified anytime there was a, a permit. Um, a road permit um, application made and um, correct me if I wrong but Julie did did you get it did you send that out to them I mean you sent out a notice of the meeting which in basically I mean yes we walked the road last week but this has not been this permit has not been sitting on our desk for for weeks here you know this is relatively quick and 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 um, you know you are here but um, Julie, did you did you get a chance to notify I, them like they'd asked? I, I sent them out this morning. Yes. Sent them out this morning. Yep. So um, I received it because I I asked Julie for it this morning. Just to clarify. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Well, I I thank you. Um, I've taken some time, so I want to see if there's anybody else that would like to speak. Thank you. Dude, it's Thank you, Emma. Shackleford again, if I can just have one minute. I, I'm, I'm not a party to this lawsuit. I know there's a lot of bad blood because of the history, but I also do think that, you know, just for, for folks who don't, I do a lot of running over and hiking in bingo. And for those who haven't been over there, it is going to be a major disruption. It's going to happen. That has, that has been decided by the courts and that is fine. But I do think, you know, maybe, I mean, these permits can be approved with conditions, and I think it would probably be, you know, very helpful. I mean, there's going to be a lot of machinery used that is loud, and I'm just wondering if there's going to be any sort of provision for, you know, appropriate hours, you know, kind of any sense of notifying, you know, um, the, the family that lives on that property when there's going to be work being done there. I just, I know there's bad blood, but it's still really impacting um, you know, people who have been residents here and property owners for a very long time. So I'm just curious if that's going to be something that's taken into consideration. And particularly as, I mean, I avoid the area as well when it's happening and when you go hiking there and that type of thing. Yeah, I think in terms of the impact in the area, this is going to be pretty um, dwarfed by the logging that's going to happen on the upper side of the road. I really think for people that use the Pine Gap Trail and, and that loop, um, this will be a pretty minimal um, intrusion in terms of the actual work being done um, between Thresher Hill Road and Bingo Road or, or Mason and Emma's property. I, I don't think that's going to be a long ongoing thing, but um, I would I guess I was I would I would request that Marty and Kristen you know notify them when they're planning to do that. Just um, but it's I, I it's not we're not talking about a, a month long project here. I I think this would probably happen in a in a week or so. Is that reasonable, Marty? Yeah, I mean if you if you talked about going from um, going down from Thresher Hill Road to to where pine gaps being driven on today it's you know it's maybe two days it's a, it's a couple of days maybe maybe it's three days i don't know but it's it's we wouldn't be there for yeah. a week and, it's, um, um excuse yeah. me dune um are you um, yeah. it, as it's written on the um agenda approval of class four highway improvement application is that something that you were planning the board was planning to vote on tonight or it's something that or this was just discussion about about what the upcoming no this is something that we're planning on voting on tonight okay. we're just okay, thank we've, you. 
but we're definitely open for discussion because we know this is a sensitive issue and a lot of okay. people are yeah, I just you know, very interested in this Thank you. over the years. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add to that? Then um, I would I would move that we approve this um, application and, and can I have keep an eye on it. Say. One more question, yeah. Um, this is I mean I think that we have to also bring into consideration that we are on Zoom right now and it is a pandemic. My this the lawsuit ended in the middle of this. My father is not here because of this technology, the barrier of this technology. And the, I, I'm just, I, I just heard you to motion to move this without any consideration mm -hmm. for alterations or considerations in the permit for the other landowners. And I really wanna know why that would be. And if there, I just want you guys to really think about anything that, you know, if you pass this, what does that mean? Go ahead and there's um, what the communication between, uh, between, are we are we obligated to communicate with Martin and Kristen? Like, but this is a town situation. It's very unclear, and um, I, I, there has to be better clarity. I don't understand what what, what this is about. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, and I I'm continuing to speak because um, this is just not addressing the people here. It is only addressing what they want to do to excavate and cut the logs so they can drive up to their property. I'm sorry. It's, right. It's, and who no, is it serving other than that? This has been a, I mean, this has been going on for, for three years now. So it's, um, it's, I mean, I would think that there's been plenty of time to contemplate what the situation is and what the reality of, of what the ask is. Um, and, and it's been established that this is a class four town road. And um, in, in terms of your father not having access to the technology to do this, I'm not sure if I understand that because you can access these meetings through phone calls and he was able to drive to Rochester to join a physical meeting. I would think that he would be able to drive to any town to have cell service to join in on a phone. So I don't, I don't see the, um, the, the reality of that, that barrier. And it's been going on long enough that uh, people have been able to figure out how to, to access, whether it's through a computer that wants to reboot in the middle of a meeting or, or on a phone, you know, landline or a cell phone. So, um, I, I, um, you know, that's, um, he's able to make the effort to come physically to a meeting. I don't see why he couldn't make the effort to, to come virtually to a meeting, but it's not, I mean, this has been a long, I mean, Pat and I spent how many hours at a mediation? I won't talk about what we talked about, but I will talk about that we spent a whole day, um, you know, trying to work on this and, and talking about the issues and talking about other possible ways of treating this and then that was not this is not like we have no concern and no have not put any effort into trying to minimize the the stresses caused everyone by this so it's um i mean so that's why i'm moving that we uh, approve the application it's if you looked at it it's very detailed about the specific spots where he's going to do what that's why i spent the couple hours the other day walking the road for the third time on a town you know to, as a town official to see the site on ground and talk specifically about what was going to happen it's not just like yeah go ahead do whatever you want to do you know um it's um you know so it's anyway I'm I'm sorry to get emotional, but I, I understand think be specific. Yeah. Yeah. That one thing that would be just one thing that would be really helpful would be to be notified of any progress as this is happening. That the town could could ask that of 
Martin and Kristen to, or, you know, they have to notify the select board and my understanding of the ordinance of the class four road highway policy. So if, as you are, our town is, is notified. Sure they can't hear me. Of we can EPA, hear you, whoever's talking there. Yeah. Uh, is notified that, that the McCurriers and ourselves would be notified as well. Is that possible? That you'd be notified when, when work is done? Well, the plans for the dates, the, as, I mean, in the ordinance, there's various things that they have to bring to you. They need to confirm that they have any state or federal permits that they might need. They show insurance, all of these things. Is it possible to be informed of the process to know when something's going to show up at our property, the hours like um, Elizabeth asked, is that possible? I think, I think, I think that's think, a, we were going to say think, something. Dune, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it would be common courtesy for landowners that adjoin uh, these projects be notified. Uh, I wasn't notified, Emma wasn't notified. Uh, we just kind of found out about it uh, last week when the uh, select board had already, you know, said, okay, we're gonna vote on it. Okay, that, that, that's good, but it would have been nice to get a heads up because I'm sure that just didn't uh, happen. You know, it didn't just sit on your desk and go out the same, within the same hour. So you had, knowledge that this was going to be coming up on the select board there was plenty of time to email us and say okay next you know board meeting these this is what's happened and there's been an application that's going to affect your property that's one question that's coming the other to question i got is on your application you have a section in there on insurance How, how's that being dealt with like if something happens. I'm curious because what if I wanted to do something? What's this whole insurance thing all about? That is, if there was someone, say someone is logging and they you're using access of a town road to, to do a job that is something that we put in an exclusion for people that own property on the road because that made it... Um, a little burdensome for that. That is insurance for the work being done, you know, while it's on the road. They're not insuring that that anyone that ever drives on that road will not um, run off the road or, you know. Oh, no, no, I realize no. that part. Yeah. It's, but my question is, is if I wanted to do something on, you know, say the, the road that goes from me down to Bingo Road, uh, if I wanted to, uh, you know, do a little work on that, do I need to I have that a... bridge? Maybe. Usually, the town fixes that bridge, but yeah, if you and wanted to, that, so your question is, is for that, I am very, very, very thankful. Yeah, because that's all we get for our taxes, and I appreciate that bridge. You don't know how much that yes, means to me. Do. Thank you. Yep. So I'm not sure what your question is. If you wanted to do some work on the road would you need insurance to do that being an adjacent property owner would not necessarily oh okay if there okay. was someone that um that was i know it's such a short section of road it's kind of hard to say it would we put that that was in there for people that are using the road that aren't residents of the road okay no, yeah. I was just confused. You know, yeah, when I no, saw it, no, I thought no. anytime you try to do anything, you know, you, that would yeah. come in play, you know. Yeah. But in the future, you know, <laughs> if, if landowners could be notified up front, that would be greatly appreciated. Yes, it would. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is that something that could be put into the ordinance considered? Um, well, in, or into this particular permit that you would be notified when work is to be done. Yeah, that yes. would be more more um, appropriate than changing an ordinance. I don't think we'd change the ordinance so much. We could put it. A, we could put that as a condition. Yeah. Okay. So that, 
Marty um, would just notify him when he's going to do his work and give him some heads up. That would be pretty good. Marty, you okay with that? Yeah, that's not a problem. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. Um, sorry, I have another question. Okay. Um, so the the location of the road is a, is a, is still uh, not understood because um, we know the corner points, right? And the distance from the top of the corner points and what uh, we've been trying to figure out in the last couple of weeks is like, where are you, where does the town actually believe the center line of the road is as it, as it goes along our property? And um, that's something that my father is very concerned about before anything begins. And is that something that can be clarified before work begins? Can that be included in here? And maybe there's an understanding. Is there an understanding already? Because we have not been notified of it. It's, it's the where it goes. Well, it's on your deed that it's the the eastern edge of your property, and it's um and in talking with the Forest Service, it's pretty um it's pretty clear. It, it it's obviously where the road would go because it starts to go uphill from there. It's not like they're going to be digging into the bank on the edge of the road. It's, it's the, um, you know, so it's, it's pretty, it's, it's but the, the center line has to be determined right all the way up. And has that been determined or is that loosey goosey? I mean, we're not, is it's, the thing is, they're not. This is not like we're looking at, um, or they're looking at, graveling a, a swath of road through there. It's it's just keeping as close to the edge of the bank and close to the edge of the property as as possible. Thank so, you for saying that. And actually, in the words in the permit, it is you know it's leaving it very open. It says that there's an understanding the road is two rods, which is 33 feet. Right. And with a, a That's general the town desire, right of way. Yeah. Right. A general desire to keep it at 20 feet. Is there is there a way that I think that that is maybe even a bit wide for going past, you know, going along there. What's the width of one car? Is that a condition that the town could be a little harder on here? Well, I I um I don't think that is an intention to make it a uh, a wide swath through there at all. Correct me if I'm wrong, Marty, but as we um walk through there, you're pretty clear that you're just going to keep it minimal and as tight to the bank as possible. Is that correct? Yeah, there's just there's some places that either need work to extend water bars or ditching on the side, and to be totally honest, what the purpose of leaving it a little bit open is we don't want to get into three more years of you said it was 12 feet and it measures 13 feet where the dirt was disturbed so our intent is to follow the road as it is but the the purpose of putting 20 feet in there is if we're putting a ditch on the side of the road in a section um we don't we don't want to be back debating that in six weeks um, thank you. Thank you, Marty, for saying that. Um, is there, uh, and I appreciate your words here and now, but how, how do we trust that, you know, that given that what's written on the paper is not that. So I, I, I guess this is really the only thing I could say about it is we've, the, the only action that, that we have we're about to take we we started that action by going and speaking with with mason before we did that through the course of the last three years there's been petitions and lawsuits and over, over and over and no one has ever approached us and said hey here's what here's what's going to be next so what i what i can give you is my word that what's in the permit is to the best of our ability accurate of what we need to do to make it passable. And, and like we said before, we'll let you guys know when we're about to do it. 
and and I and I would say that's that's the same thing we did prior to going to the select board three years ago to say, hey, we we have intention to ask for permission to use this class four road. We we spoke with Mason before we did that. I'd like to chime in a little bit about um, I, I am I'm a real estate broker and um, these folks um, bought a property with the expectation they would be able to use that property around. Um, it is a right real estate. Uh, it is a right in to um, not have a piece of property become landlocked. So um, they are entitled to have the access to the property. I didn't sell them this property, but I'll turn that on. But um, when they bought the property, they did have a, a reasonable expectation that they were going to get to go to their property. Um, that is something that I said three years ago, way, way back, where I was the select board, that um, I, I certainly, they, they were sold the property knowing that they would be able to use their property. And, um, it, it just points to that. See where we should deny them access to their property. And they can access and enjoy their property just like all of the rest of us do. Um, I think that's a fundamental right. Um, thank you, Patty. Uh, I have to say that they have access. They have access on the Forest Service Road, and they knew that when they bought it as well. Not year round. So with this, um, <clears throat> we've been around and around these these issues over the past three years. Um, many times in informally in the select board meetings and informally in in the courts and it's um i don't know how much more we want to um beat this i think that it's you know i'd, I'd like to i'm sure there's unless there's someone that really has something else that they want to say on this i would move that we approve this application with the with the um addition of the fact that marty um um, contact the property owners to let them know when he's going to be doing the work. And I'm trusting that the property owners will not use that notification to to cause any problems with that. I'd like to uh, talk to Marty here for just a, a quick second. Uh, you're going to be going extremely close to uh, Mason and Emma's uh, water supply. And I know you've had discussed this with Mason, whatever, I wasn't party, I don't know what was said. But when this work is done, uh, common decency, uh, you know, let's face it, we're all gonna end up being neighbors. So common decency would be is that you ought to try to do everything that's possible that when you get to that section of the road, and I know there's drainage that's gonna to have to be dealt with up there, that you do everything that you can to protect their water supply. I mean, you know, that, that, that to me just seems like basic common decency. Okay. And I hope that, you know, when you do do your work, you keep that in mind that, you know, it's not gonna mess up their water down the road. Thank and, you. Uh, I guess with that, I'm yeah. all for saying welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I agree. That was something that we talked about. We talked about, um, you know, specifically about um, treating that area by which we, we talked about earlier. But yeah, I, I agree. And, and I'd like to, well, it's not my neighborhood, but it's our town. And I'd like to welcome you to the, the neighborhood also. But. Any, anyone else want to chime in? Hi, it's Emma again. Um, we, I, we haven't talked about the future, and I wonder if that's been being considered here in terms of these are, um, this is sort of sounding like a, uh, a quick fix, so to speak. What between uh, 
down the line in terms of, you know, is the, is the permit, ha uh, is this something that needs to be done every year or um, what's the liability on the, on the town? I mean, I understand the policy document, but um, it also mentions, um, those are two different things. So one is to, um, what does this mean when these fixes need to be repaired? Um, what does that mean for Martin and Kristen? What does it mean for us and for the town? And I two mean, is in the ordinance, it, it says something about holding a uh, security deposit of sort. Is that something that happens? Seen as seen as in terms of the future, I'm I'm anticipating that since they're improving the road at their own cost um, to for their own use, that that kind of assumes that they would maintain the improvements that they that they would make. And um, they, they were not they're not asking the town for any any money on this. They're just asking us for for permission. So we're not we're not looking at um, um, we're not exchanging any money here. I don't think that we're requiring any bond for them to do this. We've just basically um, identified what work they're going to do and 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 ran that by you know the powers that be and the the Forest Service and the um, the road foreman and that's um, you know that's that's where we're at. Yeah, in am, I, am I understanding the policy right, though, that anybody who suggests an improvement to the town has to, the way it's written is that they have to be financially liable. So that's the transaction. Um, I don't think that's written in there that they have to be um, liable, you know, financially liable for that. There's class four roads that if there are um, now and then we go up on Mount Cushman, which is not even a class four road, but a, a legal trail. And we've dealt with some some washouts and bad spots there just because it's the right thing to do. So I think that you're, um, I understand that, you know, this is a, it's a big deal and it's concerning to you, but these um, kind of details are the kind of things that just um, dealt with in, in real time and in real life. Is that true though? Because isn't that what conditions are for that the that we anticipate? What could be an issue? Um, I mean, we're looking at the town, the town's road becoming to be in better shape and in, in a more stable condition than it is now. So you know, are, um, as it is, you're looking for a permit that is to make a one-time improvement with an assumption that they will continue. No, this is, this, I believe this permit would, uh, it's, it's a road maintenance that they're going to be doing initial improvements, but if they go to drive to camp and there's a tree down across the road, I, I believe this permit gives them permission to move that tree off the road you know so it's not um you know it's, it's um yeah i i don't think we're, we're we're um i'm not sure what you're trying to 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 bind them with here no it's it's more like a, um i'm i'm not trying to bind them i'm trying to know that i'm trying to anticipate something that could be an issue so that it's not um right and really, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah. So. No, uh, be be um, assured that this, you know, this is going to be, you know, we're going to have eyes on this, and we'll definitely be um, aware of, of how it unfolds and what happens. Not not just this summer, but in two, three, five years down the road. It's um, you know, roads are a, are a constant effort to to maintain, and so it's it's um. This is not, I, I don't know what else to tell you, but that it's, um, you know, it's, I would, um, you know, I, I trust them to do uh, the 
minimal impact but effective job and and we'll you know check that and and if we see that's not the case then we'll bring it to their attention and, and deal with that um okay i mean so how does this address things like will there have equipment up there and what if what if material and equipment is deposited on our land is that okay the, what are the guidelines we're talking here? about the town town road and the in the right of way of which is a 30 foot right away which they have no intention of 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 exercising that and then i i would there would be equipment you know for probably half a day and then i don't think there'll be parking equipment on your land I would, you know it's not um it's not not um i wouldn't be af afeard of that okay i mean it's 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 frustrating this is the only forum to ask these questions and i'm i'm taking up so much time but it's it's I mean, the last three years, it's been alarming that there's not better process to communicate about, about you know, inter-town and property issues. Um, so I just wanted to say that I'm, um, I don't really feel answered on the question about the, uh, about what we're going to expect with this permit. Uh, I hear that we will, on good word, that we'll be notified by Kristen and, and Martin, so not by the town, somehow. And that's about it. And we're, yeah, we're talking about notification of when the work is done, not notification of every time they're, they're going to drive on that road. Correct. Notification right, right. of the progress of improvements and dates and showing up. But is it, uh, so I'm sorry, I, I have another like, so who who is going to watch over this? I know there's there's laws and this and that, but what are you know, are there somebody from the state that shows up or is it all no, just it's not someone from the state? There'll be um, Probably us from the town and John Champion, the road foreman. You know, I'm the road commissioner, and Chris Matrick um, from the um, Forest Service. There, we specified certain spots up in the National Forest property where they will have input on how they want, um, you know, the the um, the land treated. That's why we um, walk it with with um, Chris. So it's um. <laughs> so um as i moved before i'd moved to approve this permit with the conditions that the property owners are noticed when the work is is going to happen Second that. And that would second that. Yes. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. So we'll um, definitely, um, Marty, let's, um, we'll be in communication about when you want to do that and make sure that the property owners also know what's happening. And, um, and of course, um, any questions that either you or Emma or other property owners have don't hesitate to reach out to the town and, and you know give us your concerns. But um, I really hope that this could um, transpire in a pretty smooth and, and I'm hoping a much less impactful way than, than people are anticipating. So um, it's been a, a long road on a short road. But um, thank you, Emma, for your your concern and your input. Thank you. Thank you, Dune and Pat and Frank. And um, I, yeah, I'm here in goodwill and um, I'm just trying to understand and yep. find a way forward. Um, thank you. Um, what is the best way to communicate with the town? Is it sending an email to Julie or? 
I guess an email to Julie is a surefire way and she can pass everything on to us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, oh, tax bills now? Tax bills. Julie, what about the tax bills here? We're awaiting information. Basically, we're trying to avoid having to um, hire the... Um, yeah, hire them to come in twice to change them because they're not sure what the state is going to do around the school vote. Do you want to talk more on that, Julie? Uh, sure. So uh, because the school budget hadn't passed yet, uh, we don't have the school education rate yet. Um, and if we, if we wait to send out the tax bills once that we have that rate, uh, it will save the town money based on Nemerc having to come down and um, work on our software. There's a lot of bits and pieces to it to uh, create once a tax bill goes out and a new one has to be created. Um, it creates a lot of confusion for the taxpayers if they're receiving a couple a year. Uh, we noticed that this past year when uh, several taxpayers overpaid. So that's gonna create more problems. So uh, basically we just, uh, I, I spoke with the VLCT attorney to ask what our options are. Uh, he said that so long as we are under a state of emergency, the select board has the ability to make a decision to um, act on the Act 102, which allows you to make the decision to postpone or uh, change the tax rate, postpone, you know, all of those things. So uh, Becky and I still can uh, put together the municipal tax rate, which you can vote on. And um, we were going to, we were going to get together tomorrow and, and get that, get that uh, situation done. But uh, if we go if the state is in a state of emergency up until July 15th, this is when you're given that opportunity to make that decision. If we do not extend, if the governor does not extend the state of emergency, then it has to go before the town as a town vote. So those are our options. Um, and we, we have a little bit of time. We can create a resolution if, you're, if you'd like. It's, uh, it's up to you. So do we have any idea when they might have the final tax bill or is there any guesstimate on that? From what I understand, they're going to have a meeting tomorrow night. Um, if the budget changes, I understand it may take another 30 day warning. If the budget doesn't change and they go to vote, I heard that it could be a 10 day, but I, I don't have that confirmed, that information confirmed. So. Um, I, I wanted to get in touch with uh, Tara at the school uh, down at the supervisory union and find out on Wednesday um, where we're at and where we go. And when are the tax bills you were hoping, usually they are out um, when? Generally we're printing them this week. Right. So we have to, from what the VLCT attorney said, was that we have to give taxpayers 30 days. So we have to have the bills sent out 30 days prior to the due date. For the August 15th, you're saying? Yeah. Correct. For the collection. Sounds like we got to jump on something. Yeah. <laughs> don't really want to put off the, um, the the due date of the taxes. I mean, but, and what, it costs 1500 bucks to have Nimrick come in and reprogram if we have to change it? it it's about that. Yeah, it's about yeah. $1,000 to them and then all of the other costs with shipping or, um, sorry, postage. Right. And, postage and everything. And everything. Yeah. So, yeah. What does that do if we put it out another month to have them do September? I know everybody usually pays on August, and that's the way we voted at town meeting. But right. what if we change that date to September 15th? 
can we legally do that? You right can. now, it sounds like we can, right? You, you as a select board can make that decision. You have to, uh, majority has to approve that. So as a treasurer, what do you think of that decision? Uh, as a treasurer, I'd really not like to print them. Uh, no, I meant in terms of, of the need for oh. that income. Uh, we still have, um, we still have money in the account uh, that we could, we could make it a month. Mm -hmm. If need be, um, and then we have, you know, if we have to do an anticipation, there's always that option, right? Which I don't, I don't think we would need to. Um, and when does the first um, payment to the school system come up? You know, that's a good question. I'd that's like the big one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I. I know we've made payments to them and and that works out fine. Um, but that's a good question. That's something I could look into. I, I would not be averse if, if we really take a close look at what bills are coming due and specifically the school, which is the biggest chunk. Mm -hmm. I would not be averse to, to um, postponing that August 15th to September 15th to alleviate all this hassle of the um an, an extra expense of the line of credit right sorry Pat I didn't we also have our line of credit that we approved at our last meeting to fall back for finances. Right. Correct. I, even though if we did even bump it out to the 15th, I think you're still going to have people making payments. Probably in August anyway. You know? Right. Just because that's their, their budget schedule. and um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think you'll have some revenue coming in. You won't get it all, but you'll get some. Right. Uh, I think, so, Julie, wouldn't you be getting money from the state unless I misunderstand understood it? I got a letter from the state today telling me that um, the state was going to be giving the town, like I, I qualified for a, 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 like a rebate or whatever you call it. Yeah. I mean, I don't get it, but you know, it's a credit. We, we, did, get, uh, we did get some state payments in um today okay into, the, into, into our account so we do have some small amount that has come in yeah i was just thinking that what they did was that if they gave me a credit for something or with some other landowner the money goes to the town right correct okay thank you yeah and that that like to have the like i know that they extended the july the taxes for people uh, personal taxes weren't due until july 15th so the state payments, a lot of towns were looking at state payments. That only affects one person. To have a to have a rate like the the um, the school education rate that affects everyone across the board. So you know to change to to send somebody a revised bill for a state payment is not nearly as much uh, work as it would be to do across the you know all ta taxpayers to go across the board. I, I, I like the idea of putting it off a month. Um, Just to... the difference between the, uh, people that have escrow, uh, <laughs> that may end up a lot of work for you to in, um, have their mortgages and when they oh that I created it's a rock as far as I can see. I'm not catching everything you were no, saying. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get what you were saying, Pat. Yeah. The um, the people that have escrows for their taxes, where it's automatically. Uh -huh. That complicates matters when it's automatic payments. Those may just come yeah. automatically to the town, like Frank was saying. We might get some payments coming in. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Now the escrow companies they will they will call. Uh, they have been calling 
And uh, I put them off a week and I told us to give me a call this week coming to, uh, we send them a file of the taxes when they're ready. So like when we, when we print out the tax, we send the escrow company a file. So those files they won't receive yet. Can they be notified of that anyway, or, or is it is yeah, that an impossible I, I, job? No, I can update them, and um, I just I I have them keep in touch with me. If if I'm saying if we change the date, right, right. Well, I mean that's what I was wondering. Right. I well, you know, with the um state of emergency and the, and the option to give us this little elbow room to to wiggle around the rules i i would i I'd, I'd move to put that off a month and to make it due on the september 15th instead of august 15th what do you guys say the worst problem i see with that is is it puts the november one really tight to the september one right that's but, the only issue i can see with bumping it back but it's kind of, I don't know. It's, I mean, and when you really, if, up, we, I guess, I don't. if we like communicate through the paper or what have you in the website that people still know that the taxes are coming due, they could still pay, you know, even if they paid a, a portion what they we'll was due last year at that time, and then they could make up a little bit of a difference and get on board with the November payment. I mean, it's really, um, it's not that much of a complication. Right. I mean, when I mean, you look some at people town, will will take advantage of, oh, I don't have to pay for another yeah. month. But when it all comes out in the wash, the taxes are still due at the end of the year, and they they want to, you know, they're going to have to pay it. You know, really right. just saving the confusion. I know it was um, it was confusing last year to get the tax bill and then get another tax bill, and that I made the wrong payment. And then it's it's you know, it'd be nice if we could take a little bit of the confusion out of the current situation. So basically, Dune, I could say that people um, are welcome to pay earlier if they're able to do so. You heard the thunder? Did it go boom? What was that? I love the I, you don't know. I was asking you a question. I don't know who that is. I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's somebody on the phone. Anyway, would it be okay to say that the board that you noted that people were welcome to, even though if you did decide to to uh, to put the date back a month, that people are welcome to pay earlier if they're able to do so? I'd say, um, I'd say, um, yeah. I would Can encourage them to pay earlier, um, and okay. that the, the any change could be hopefully clarified by the November payment. Who is that? I don't know. It's um, really loud. Noon, you could just ask people to mute. That's maybe yeah. what's coming through. They're not muted. Yeah, if I could figure out which one it is, I could do that too. Um, one or two, I think it's this one. The one that ends in 0102. Do you have a baby coming tomorrow? Um, it doesn't give me the. Uh, oh, there we go. I think there I, they I, went. All right, there we <laughs> go. They're gone now. Yep. Okay. Um, so, um, I know. What do you say? Should we? You guys have a second? I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so I, I guess we announce that in the paper. Is that what you wanted? Is that the way you want to handle that? I think we should. Um, or post it or yeah you, you might want to do something in addition to me putting it in my article something in addition do we, to the do paper do a legal notice i could send out a postcard or something i think that would probably be the way to go it's um you know it's a That's little a bit good of idea expense. yeah because not everybody reads the newspaper although i wish they did <laughs> yeah 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 that's probably so you're going to postcard everybody then julie yeah i could do that yeah okay while we're piling up your plate there, <laughs> I hope we're not yeah, overdoing we did, it. <laughs> we did take something off her plate, though, not having to do the tax bills twice, though. Hopefully. <laughs> right. right. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, now we're on masks, I guess. Going. All right. Um, Ethan, you've been, I'm going to skip ahead to you. You've been very patient waiting 
talking about the um, school building. Are you still with us? Boom. I am here. All righty. Uh, terrible lighting. Um, there we go. Sort of. Or how about that? There we go. Um, so great. Thank you for having me. Um, I just want to say first off that um, this is completely informational gathering being here at this point. Um, I've had a chat with Patty. Patty was at our last meeting um, and I'm having uh, some discussions with the WRVSU uh, lawyers tomorrow just to get a sense of the whole procedure involved in this. Um, uh, but totally the, the school board has made no formal motion to, uh, to uh, engage in this pr proposal or anything like that, this transfer. Um, the one thing we did say was that uh, at our last meeting uh, that we were going to have no educational activity in the high school building this for this year, and we were going to make vigor vigorous efforts to move to new opportunities. Um, I'm taking that on to just find out so we have the basic bare bones of, uh, well, not the basic bare bones, the, the, the full scale of what this transfer would be like and make sure that that is, you know, something both sides are interested in. Uh, um, excuse so this, me, Ethan, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm unsure as to what you mean by this transfer. Could you clarify uh, the transfer, that? Basically, of transferring the high school building to the town of Rochester. Okay, thank you. And, and building surround science. Thank you for being, I get ahead of myself. Um, there are some details that I know already. Um, um, also, Jamie Kinarney, the new superintendent, is very much a part of this process. And um, uh, we've been talking back and forth. He had a couple things. Um, there's a couple things I can sort of tell you as far as subdivision, but I, I, I don't know how you want to start this conversation. Uh, Pat, Pat Harvey made it sound like this was something that maybe had been discussed already or was um, that certainly you were enthusiastic or interested. Um, and I think that's the best way to go forward is to make sure we have all the irons out, all the details out there so that then we can uh, make a informed decision on both sides. Right. Um, so what I have, I have some numbers and some things that I, I have been told um what would you want some of those what do you what where do you want to take this basically i think during our regular meeting we just want to go on record and saying that uh, we have started the conversation about mm -hmm. the transfer of the building um we are anxious to move this along mm -hmm. as as i believe the school board is now anxious to move this along yeah, um, anxious to make, well, have an informed discussion about it. I would say that's a more accurate way to say it. And um, if if that was the uh, message that came across in the school vote, mm -hmm. the budget vote, um, we heard it and um, we're all going to be at your service. Okay. Great. Um, um, we we can to uh, discussing numbers which i did see some um mm -hmm. get into our executive session um this is okay. again exploratory and informational only there's no decisions tonight and to also go on record by saying that there is a school board meeting tomorrow night yes so if anyone has any further interest um mm -hmm. they may want to dial into that and listen on to that meeting yes i, I it is my hope to bring uh, the school board a, a sort of a bullet list of steps, you know, starting from the list you gave me, Pat, and working, um, uh, also adding some details that I've, I've gotten today, bond amounts and things like that, um, mm -hmm. as well as basic costs and procedures of surveys and subdivisions. Um, so hopefully we'll have a, 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 a very clear picture of what this, how this process would go. Um, I have one question. How, are, are all of you familiar? Uh, I believe, Vic, you have read it, the engineering study of the high school building. Um, and do you have a copy of it? I know there's one at the town office. I would highly encourage you to take a look at that report um, 
before you go, you know, uh, so that we're we're talking, you know, uh, the the standard they used, of course, was for a, a, an educational facility, which might be different than a municipal facility in terms of dollar amounts and where money is spent. But I think it's something that you should be familiar with because it is a, a, a an important tool in this process. I've seen it. it it's chock full of uh, very useful information. Right. About yes. Yeah. The building and some of the history. Good. Um, any anything I, else? Do I you want to? Um, oh, yeah. I, I had a thought um, today, and and. Um, listening to the news and about what the future of, of education is going to be in, in light of COVID. And, and just to kind of, I wondered to what extent could the um, excess space of having two buildings there maybe turn into an asset in the future for the school if it's required to figure out a way to, to separate students more. I'm just a thought that threw out there, but it may be it has been to throw out there. It it has certainly been discussed. Um, there is, you know, the, the the it comes back to these dollar amounts to yeah. effectively renovate the the building to right. an educational level, um, and uh, this this is the biggest contention. If if the school if the high school building was in excellent shape um, at the, at at this date, I think that would be a very different discussion than um, knowing what we do. Um, uh, so that, that it is there right now that we're really focusing on, um, outdoor space. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah. actually I've been on, on the phone is another thing I'm doing for the school board is for a tents and what kind of weatherproof structures we can use for, um, outside education. So that was why, one of the reasons why we decided this was a good year to at least experiment with the idea of nothing happening in the high school, turning the heat down. Um, to the bare minimum, and uh, and 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 because we were hoping to uh, planning to expand outside um, as the mm -hmm. extra space. Ethan, could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. When you're saying nothing happening in the high school, do you mean just the school itself? Yeah, no, and no educational activity or things like, school. for example, the the White River Valley Players. Their home yes. has always been the height has also yep. been an auditorium, but. How does I've already happen? talked. I, I already spoke with Dick and Dorothy about this, okay. um, about the heating and what might have to happen. And of course, there's all kinds of standards around what needs to happen as far as performance spaces to have people in those spaces. Right. And they also, felt that this was a good year for this experiment as far as the usage as well. Also, are you talking about since the music traditionally the music program and the art programs have been over in the high school building and the elementary yes, school and one building. one planet would be included in this so you those would all be over in the elementary building uh, that is that is what we're working on uh, or outside proposed plan or outside, or outside. Yes. yeah okay now i just wanted to make sure because another thing that was brought up at one point was um and I can't remember which meeting I go to so many of them <laughs> it was was that one one uh, one use of the um high school building the space there where the library was and that with the um, uh, classrooms along the side would make possibly a, a really good um uh daycare center kind of thing oh you know, for, the, for the town i mean it, it, this is a very complex decision oh, i know i know i'm and, just and, saying. No, and i and i don't mean to belabor any i mean the, the ideas that have been put forward um no. uh, uh, it's it's um and it's far from a decision that's been made yet. Oh, no, 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 no. I just we thought could, that was something It could be another use that would be helpful to young families in town. That's oh, absolutely. I heard. I, mean, I think, you know, I think Vic could give you a whole list of potential. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I've got, you know, I've got my eye on a little corner myself. Yeah. Um, okay. But as I say, this is information gathering and a formal sort of hello. Yep. We're starting this process. Um, more detail will come as as we have it. So, Pat, when you said about um, executive session, that was obviously not including me, right? That's something, um, or what? It can do because you're going to provide us with some information about. Um, we're not making any decisions, but we're going to be oh, okay. sharing back and forth. I wanted to mention something because Martha is on here. Um, uh, I just wanted to verify publicly, Martha, that you transferred property um, 
from your own land to the town of Rochester, which is the area that was create that created this state space. Right. Your property it, went almost up to the school building. It you? did. When I bought my house 35 years ago, they explained to me standing up there on the hill looking down, and of course skate space wasn't there or anything, that I owned that part all the way down there. And as a single mom with three kids and several jobs I the, the the idea of trying to get that mode and my kids were little and everything I, I couldn't believe that I owned that piece of property well anyway a few years later when they talked about doing the skate space thing in memory of, of Katie and that kind of stuff and I was approached about it that was a, a blessing to me obviously no money changed hands I gave it to the town because they didn't have any money and I felt like I needed to do that um, Katie was in my son Peter's class. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, it did go up almost to the school and um, I don't have the exact border, but it goes up a little way up the hill, not much, you know, mm -hmm. past the skate. The, um, the lawyer who I'm working with at WRSVA was the lawyer who handled the transfer of property right. from the Rochester School to the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. And he is familiar with that that survey and where that land is, so he confirmed the boundaries. Oh, good, because of the um, the um, I think it was Ross that put in the little bike track there next to the mm -hmm. skate space just in the last few years, and that's all on that property too. Not mm -hmm. it certainly doesn't come up on mine. Yeah. Okay, and when you made that transfer, there were no stipulations about the use of it or anything like that? Um, no, it's just that I gave it with the intent that it was going to be a skating rink for the town, a, pu a public space for the town, you know, a recreation space. Okay, I'm glad um, we... Glad, I'm glad we held up our end of the bargain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's wonderful to be able to look down there and see the kids. And it was great this past week to be able to look down and see Kinley Tenor and the kids um, on, you know, doing some bike, uh, mountain okay. bike stuff. I don't know if anybody saw the little piece I had in the paper this week, but that was a wonderful use of it too. You know, I, I love the fact that it does still get used all these years later. I mean, that was a long time ago, actually, yeah. over 20 years ago, maybe 25. I can't remember. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Good. Anything okay. else I don't want to hold up your? Uh... Um, no, I guess yeah. If you wouldn't mind hanging on, Ethan, just if we have more specific um, have one... questions to ask, I don't know. If Great. We're gonna... um, I'll I'll stick around and mute and go off and give me a holler when you're ready for executive okay. session. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, to be continued for sure. Um, executive. So really. Um, that was the um i think that's the end of our of our list here is there anything no, we, the, what about the thing about masks face masks oh around? no no okay yeah i jumped over that i couldn't see it my mask was in the way um vic um <laughs> you want to speak to there has been some um questions about to what extent would the town of rochester um make a recommendation around the use of masks and in, in public spaces and you want to speak to that there? sure sure uh, and let me just preface that by pointing out that uh you know the, the uh, vermont state health department uh, posts information about uh which towns have confirmed covid cases and if so how many and so far rochester remains among the towns that do not have any confirmed known uh covid cases it's a uh, it's a minority of the number of towns of uh, Vermont, but I think it's a, it's a good group to be part of and we ought to yeah. try to do everything we can to keep it that way. Um, mass, wearing the masks are it's well documented uh, from federal and state and, and professional groups is the, the, you know, one of the best ways of slowing down, preventing the spread of the virus. And so as I think as we all go around town, we see that Quite a few people are wearing masks, but there's a sizable number of people are not. And I think we should uh, do more to uh, reinforce and encourage people to wear masks. You know, this is this is a uh, it's a marathon. This is not over by a long shot at this point. And uh, we just need to all adopt new habits of uh, wearing masks when you cannot uh, be uh, uh, you know more than six feet away from your uh, from your neighbor. So. Wearing masks uh, when you can't be more than six feet away from another person, uh, and, and especially going into uh, businesses which are enclosed spaces, and you know you don't get the same air circulation as you are outside. I think it would be really important for the select board to uh, uh, to go on record to recommend that uh, 
that uh, everybody in Rochester do that, both visitors as well as uh, residents. Yeah, I don't think there's any any reason not to make such a recommendation. I mean, I have um, I have a box of masks. I, I found in my business that 95% of the people coming in the door are wearing masks, and if they're not, as soon as I mention something, they will be willing to to you know they'll pull one out of their pocket or I offer, but or try and. Luckily, my business is can be conducted outside to a, a large extent, but I think that. Um, the enforcement is basically just everyone's responsibility and awareness and leading by example. We're not um, we're not going to be asked the constable to go and start um, handing out masks and harassing people. But um, um, I know you guys have any input on this. No, I, I you know it's it's kind of a well, it's just. You're never, never going to be able to enforce it. You can't force somebody to wear a mask, but it's always pretty nice to uh, to see people go into businesses or whatever with their mask on. That's really kind of kind of important, I think. So if we do it, I think that that's the biggest thing I see. As far as walking around outdoors without a mask, I don't have an issue with that myself. But if you're going to like you said, Vic, if you're going to be within six feet of someone, you know, less than six feet, you know, it's it's appropriate to have. I've had some online too. I've yeah. had some online too. I mean, the uh, the whole point of the masks is is and and from the beginning, the whole point about this whole situation is to assume that you are infected and right. protect other people from that. You know, and even though uh, knock on wood that's not the situation in town here, but that still is operating, um, you know, that's that's the way to move forward to keep things um, mellow around here. Um, June, from just my own observation, going into Max once a week to buy my groceries, I rarely see anybody without a mask. The last, when I was in there on uh, Saturday morning, I believe it was, um, I only saw one person without a mask. Yeah. But, you know, the place wasn't mobbed or anything, but, you know, there were maybe a couple people in each aisle. It wasn't, you know, but it wasn't empty. Either. But I think people are trying, I think most people around here are, are pretty good about it, but I don't know, I don't get out that much, so. <laughs> and the question then comes up, do, because um, most of the people in town or a lot of the people in town are pretty savvy to that. It's the the issue is the visitors and here we are in, in you know the height of the summer season and moving into the fall that's that's the um you know that's the worry and just like um we early on put up the um i think char put the put some posters up on the park just reminding people of a of a quarantine process if they're coming from out of state um perhaps we come up with a um catchy little you know this is a Rochester is a, is a mask town or something, you know, um, to make an attempt to, to communicate to visitors that um, it's, it's requested and, and appreciated if people do wear masks. It's put on the agenda that uh, we are joining other Vermont communities mandating face masks in Rochester school buildings um we don't own the school buildings no, i think the school building is a separate item of the, on the agenda okay okay yeah 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 that's that's separate agenda okay. yeah. all right yeah and in mandating i don't you know i think that with recommending i don't know if we have the power we're not going to go through the process of creating an ordinance here that is unenforceable so i i think that really the wording would be more just to you know the we support and recommend the use of masks and um june i think that's a great idea and i don't know i don't i don't i didn't notice if max had a sign saying asking people to wear masks but if you had a had some signs that you could put up around the village you know maybe near bit the businesses and stuff that would be a good idea i think yeah i'll work with our uh rest of our uh, covid task force team and we'll come up with some communication methods to help uh, educate and reinforce. Uh, yeah. this is, it's something that we're just gonna have to renew every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
but I, for one, am thankful to be doing this on Zoom so I don't have to be wearing a mask right now. <laughs> That's true. Um, That's this long a session. Yeah, yeah right, we're right. Two, two hours. Yeah, speaking of which, is that a, is that a move to um, adjourn, Frank? Hey, yeah. Um, <laughs> I have one quick question about executive sessions as real estate. It, what's that going to be about, or should I? Basically, we're like we're we're um, talking in, in some more details with Ethan about some any um, more information and numbers that um, school building get. transfer. Okay, yeah. alrighty. And I obviously am not speaking. Oh, and me. Jeff Gephardt would like to speak. I have a question uh, for the board. I understand I've been appointed uh, energy coordinator. Yep. I would love to know any particular um, needs of the board in that position. And then I would also like to have the authority to see all of our electric bills, all of our, our fuel bills so that I can uh, begin yep. uh, looking at uh, how we can save money. Absolutely. Um, Julie, is that something that you could um, help gather and get to Jeff? Yeah, any time, Jeff, that you're that you'd like to come down, we have um, that information available to you. Okay, very good. If, if very good. We, I have made contact with Efficiency Vermont and know who the uh, contacts are for support of municipalities. Um, there's uh, an energy committee started uh, on its own here in in Rochester, so I've joined that to help them out. And I've met with the two um Regional Commission and uh, a selectman from Granville and one from Hancock. Um, they are, as you know, uh, working on trying to get a five town um, energy committee together. Right. Um, in that there's interest in volunteers in Rochester, I don't see any reason to wait for Rivers Ataquichi to go through their very long process here. Yeah. Um, but we can certainly join that when they're ready, if that's the board's pleasure. I understand that I work at the board's pleasure. Um, I have no authority without or, um, making that decision. So I'm uh, just going to be looking for ways we can help. I can help the town out. No, well, thank you. It would be Please, our pleasure, it would be our pleasure, Jeff, if you start gathering your expertise to help us when we do acquire an ex high school building. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm one on the uh, Envision Rochester Building Repurposing Committee who suggested we contact a commercial realtor and see whether there's anybody out there interested in that albatross. Um, you know, it, it, we have there are some wonderful, wonderful ideas for how to repurpose the school, but I just don't see the developer there to fulfill all of those wonderful ideas. Maybe the community can come up with those people internally, but you know, there's usually a need for money involved. So I, you know, I'm, I'm just curious as to uh, how an outsider might view that facility and, and whether there are needs for a facility of that square footage in, in this location that would work. So every, people are, you know, Vic uh, is on the call right now too, and, and the others on the, uh, and committee have come up with an awful lot of great ideas, um, but uh, you know whether um, they're. I just throw in a suggestion. Not, uh, for maybe this falls under your auspices, Jeff. Is um, thinking about community compost place, an area somewhere in the town where we could have a community compost and people could benefit from that uh, for their gardens. Very good point. Um, I'm more um, attuned to efficiency and energy use, but on the committee, um, the, the local committee, there are people who are very interested in that are going to be pursuing that as well. Oh, good. Thank you. Great idea. So that's all I had. I just wanted to to uh, see if there's anything in particular about the buildings or facilities that you know of that I should focusing on and if not i'll just start to look yeah, at what opportunities are out there what kind of hey, fruits Jeff, hanging and how Jeff, i got one thing uh uh for with green mountain power you might want to touch base with a guy by the name of freeman corey freeman he Corey. Does a lot of a lot of buildings like that 
Okay. Okay. Yep. And he said there is money there to use. Corey, C O R Y or E Y? Yes. Yes. Very good. Yep. Let me know if you can't get him. I'll I'll get in touch with him. Very good. Give him your your info. info. We also got to get that substation fixed up so we can put more solar in town. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Maybe that's the the school roof. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's been one of the ideas floated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. The yep. school roof's above the floodplain. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And thank you, Jeff. Okay, thank you guys. I've got some grandkids here to feed. All right, go have fun. So um, with that, I'd entertain a motion to um, adjourn. I second it. All in favor? Uh, all in favor. Um, can all I right. ask one quick question before you do that, Dune? Yes. Uh, do you anticipate making any sort of public decision You know, after you come out of executive session? No. No, this is just information. This is okay. Just no, I was just going to say I could call. I could call Julie tomorrow for her. You I'm going to call her anyway for her minutes because, um, particularly during the the part about Pine Gap, I got confused a couple times taking notes, and I I'm, I'm yeah. going to need to yeah. look at hers too. <laughs> this was a long meeting. It was All right, a long thanks. meeting. It's been a while since we had been one this long. I'm not surprised right. though. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Martha. All right. Um, all in favor. Aye. 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 Have fun, guys. Yeah. Good night. And Orca, I guess you can leave because we're um, executive session and we're not really going to, it's just information gathering, not really looking to make decisions. So, Is this just for me? Should I stay on or would you? You can stay on, Ethan, because we really wanted to get that information from you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think that um, Arca Media can go away. I think you, I think you can control that. Because yeah, Ray Ballou is the administrator of the thing and he's the one who nixes them. <laughs>